What's going on everyone, my name's Spiders, and I was just able to complete the Pokemon Sword and Shield Pokedex, so I wanted to create this video to kind of give you guys some tips as to how you can do it fast, with the fastest ways that I can think of in order for you to complete your Pokedex. Now, this doesn't have all the tips in the world, so what I wanted to do is have the comment section as a kind of hub for other tips that you guys might think of, things that really helped you out. So if you have anything that you use that isn't in this video, please be sure to leave it in the comment section below. Also, let me know how far through the Pokedex you are before you start this. I'm gonna leave timestamps in the comment section linking to different parts of the video if you wanna skip different parts, if there's something that you already know about, for example. So there'll be timestamps down there just so I don't waste your time. If you'd like to see some shiny hunting from me, because I was very excited about completing the Pokedex to get the shiny charm. It is accomplished. It is accomplished. Let me see. It. Let me see it. Then I will be streaming it pretty much every single day on twitch.tv slash powers. I would love to see you over there. Maybe you can watch that while you're completing your Pokedex. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first tip I can give you is catch as you go. If you're just beginning the game, I would encourage you to go through every single route as you get to them and try and fill out as much of the dex entries as possible as you're going through the game. Because trust me, there is nothing worse then getting to the end of the game, deciding that you want to fill out the Pokedex, and realizing that, oops, I didn't catch any Pokemon, so there's 370 left to go. So make sure you're catching your Pokemon as much as possible as you go through the game. And also, another tip I would give you is to make sure that you're cycling your Pokemon out. Now, a good way to do this is to have one really high level Pokemon and having five Pokemon on your team that you need to evolve and have them on your team leveling up as you're playing through the game. Now, this may not be the most exciting way to play for sure, but it is definitely a really fast way to get a lot of evolutions done if you need to get uh, a lot of levels on Pokemon, is while you're playing through the game, just have them on your team, and then you'll get the levels really, really easily. Another piece of advice I would give you is to make use of surprise trade. Now, usually there aren't the most amazing things on there, but you can be surprised, haha, by surprise trade. A lot of times, people will send off Pokemon that they are breeding for competitiveness on surprise trade if they don't meet the standards. Things like Gumi, things like Komoo, things like the starter evolutions, things like Dreepy are all things that you might find through surprise trade as people try and breed for competitively viable Pokemon and they realize that they have a box full of things they don't need, they'll send out and surprise trade in order to make someone else's day. So that's something you can definitely make use of. There's definitely no drawback to making use of surprise trade. And who knows what you're gonna get? Like, I'm sending off this steel dragon thing right now. Who knows what I'm gonna get? Is it gonna be a Dreepy? Is it gonna be a Squovit? Is it gonna be a Zigzagoon? It's a Snom! Perfect! I didn't need it, but I mean, I hope that guy needed that steel dragon thing at the very least. The wild area is gonna be an absolute blessing for you filling up that Pokedex. I would advise you make use of the max raid battles because they can give you access to very, very rare Pokemon, like for example, this Lapras, or they can also give you access to version exclusives. You can catch version exclusive Pokemon through max raid battles if you encounter them. For example, Scrafty is one that you can catch through a max raid battle if you're on shield version, and that's pretty fantastic. Also, it does become a lot easier to catch Pokemon through max raid battles, I feel like, than just going out into the wild. Though, a lot of people have had issues with catching Pokemon at the end of a max raid, so it really depends on the stars of the battle. But max raids are fantastic for finding things that you wouldn't normally find otherwise. And also, it gives you a lot of items that will help you evolve your Pokemon. Things like EXP candies, rare candies. You do these max raid battles, you get the version exclusive, you get the Pokemon or whatever, and then you have the candies left over in order to level up and evolve other things, which makes it very good for getting a lot of pages filled. The wild area is full of Pokemon that you can only get in certain weather. There's nothing more frustrating than having to wait on a certain type of weather and just not getting it over and over and over again. It's gonna waste your time, but there's actually a way to change the weather really, really easily and quickly. As you can see, it's sandstorming right now, and I really you don't need the sandstorm going on. It's a little bit annoying. So what we can do is we can go to the start menu. We can go through to our system settings. We can go down into system and we can change the date and time because the date and time is tied to the wild area's weather. So for example, if I were to change it to the 23rd at 6 a.m. and then set that, 
If we head back into the game now, open this up, and we reset the area here. When we head back outside again, wow, it's hailing! Just what I needed! Now I can go and catch, uh, Sneasel or whatever. So that's how you can change the weather really quickly and easily in the wild area. You can keep doing that until you get the weather that you need, and then you can find the Pokémon that you need without having to wait. 70,000 years. The next piece of advice I would give you is to always use quick balls as much as possible. Quick balls are an absolute godsend when it comes to catching Pokemon quickly. If you use a quick ball in the first turn of battle, it's five times more effective at catching Pokemon than using any other kind of ball, or using a Pokeball, sorry. They each have their own modifiers, and quick balls, if used on the first turn, are very, very effective. The problem being, where you get quick balls from. Now, unfortunately, quick balls are not super easy to get. The only place that you can find quick balls at at least one of these Watt Traders, the only place that you can buy quick balls from are either the Watt Traders in the wild area, and this one doesn't have one, unfortunately, but if you check the map, they will tell you which area has a Watt Trader, so you will have to go and scour the map and see exactly which areas do have what traders, like for example, that place does right now. I think it changes pretty regularly. But if you cannot get one from a what trader, the only other place to get a quick ball or buy quick balls from is from Winden. The Winden Pokemon sells them for a thousand Pokebucks a piece, and unfortunately, that's right at the end of the game. But if you have completed the game and you need something to catch things quickly, Quick balls are what you gotta go for. Now, this next one is gonna sound like a massive cop-out answer, but honestly, having friends that you're able to trade with is a massive help. A lot of the Pokedex pages were filled by friends and viewers of mine who were able to trade me the Pokemon that I needed or trade with me to do trade evolutions. It, it sounds really like run-of-the-mill self-explanatory, but if you have a friend with the different version to you, you can get version exclusives that way. And it might seem pretty simple, but that's also a way that you could fill it up very, very quickly. What's that you say? You don't have any friends? Well, fear not, because there are also Discord servers all over the place. There are subreddits like r slash Pokemon trades that you can go on to, to request and give it different Pokemon if you need a certain thing. That is the kind of place that you can go to. There are communities all over the internet solely focused on filling the Pokedex right now as there are new releases. Get in those Discord servers, like for example, my Discord server, the Sub Noodle Discord server that you can join if you're a YouTube member or a Twitch sub, has a special area just for trading in this game to fill the Pokedex pages. Now, if you're not a YouTube member, you're not a Twitch sub, don't worry. There's lots of other Discord servers you can join. There are lots of other subreddits that you can go and check out. Like, for example, r slash Pokemon Trades. And there are lots of big communities just dedicated to filling the Pokedex. Now, some of the baby Pokemon can be really finicky kid to get and really annoying. Like, Mr. Mime, for example. If you breed two Mr. Mime together, you'll get a Mr. Mime. In order to get a Mime Junior, what you need to do is give the Mr. Mime an odd incense before you breed them together. Now, fortunately, there is an area in Pokemon Sun and Moon, or sorry, Sword and Shield, what game am I playing, where you can buy all of the incenses right here. It's in Holbury, and there is a marketplace that allows you to buy all of them right here. So you can use these to get things like Mime Jr. and Munchlax without any problems. Now, some of you guys out there might have some issues finding people to trade with, but in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there's actually a possibility of finding some trade evolutions in the wild for the first time ever in a Pokemon game. I've seen people find things like Machamp and Conkelda just hanging out in the wild, without having to trade at all. Now, it doesn't look like I can get any to spawn right here as they are really rare and they may be only specific spawns, but it is possible to find some trade evolutions if you look hard enough. Like, for example, I'm pretty sure this Dusk Noir doesn't usually spawn in other game. Oh, oh, here he comes. Here he comes! Oh, Jesus! Now, things like Stone Evolutions and Evolutions specifically can be hard to get in the other Pokemon games, but if you go to the Lake of Outrage, not only will you find some Evolutions, but behind each one of these pillars, you will find one of the Evolution Stones. Like, for example, that Dusk Stone right there. So if you come here and you're short on Evolution items, you'll be able to find at least one of them around each of these pillars that you can then use to evolve your, your Nuzleaves and your, your Lombres, and then you can catch things like these big boys over here while you're doing it as well. Fantastic! 
Also, making use of the Pokedex to tell you where to go next actually helps too. Now, it doesn't do it anymore because I've completed the Pokedex, but when you have spaces open, it will give you recommendations based on Pokemon that you've seen but haven't caught yet to go and capture. It'll also tell you where to go and capture them as well. So keep an eye on those recommendations because as soon as you click on it, it'll tell you exactly where to go and you know where to go to get it. But like I said, if you have any more tips, please do share them in the comments section below so we can get some community efforts to complete the Pokedex together. Get that shiny charm. Like I said, I will be shiny hunting pretty much every single day at twitch.tv slash powers. And if any of these head tips did help you out at all, I would encourage you to subscribe because if you don't, then you'll be missing out on other good stuff. And you don't want to miss out on the other good stuff because it's good. All my Twitch, my Twitter, my Instagram too, it's all linked in the description. I would encourage you to go follow me on all those places because there's incredibly good content on all of those places. Thank you so much for watching and uh, good luck. Get the shiny charm. Get some shinies. Finish the Pokedex. Do whatever. Have fun. Bye. Thank you so much to our Twitch subs and YouTube members of the day. Remember, if you are a YouTube member or a Twitch subscriber, that both gives you access to the sub Discord. And I appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you so much, guys.